Warning! The Stone Age Gamer Podcast includes a lot of bad language. Cover your motherfucking ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is the ghost with the most, Dan Ryan. Just a hundred percent. Wait, am I dead? Fuck. That sucks. I don't know. It's October, and I made a Beetlejuice reference. We don't yeah, no, I'm with you. Topic tonight. I'm with you. We just I'm... we just don't. So, in the mortal words of my mace of insanity, get a straw and suck it up. What are we going to do with our time? I hope you like thirty dollar radishes because the Stone Age Gamer podcast starts now. <laughs> well, hi everyone. This is episode five hundred and thirty-seven. It's the week of October twenty-fifth, two thousand twenty-four, and welcome. Welcome. For anyone new here, this is the official podcast of StoneAgeGamer.com. Dan and I talk every week about the world of video games, uh, what's happening in the world of video games from Retro Gamer's perspective, as well as whatever the heck else is going on in our lives. Speaking of which, Dan, what's new and cooking in the world of Dan? What is new and exciting in the world of Dan? Uh, well, I mean, uh, the Yankees are up 2-1 right now, both in the game and in the series, as we are sitting here recording this. Um, the Mets however, are getting spanked, right? Uh, no, well, the, yes, but they also won today's <laughs> game. Um, so that's exciting if you're uh, a Mets fan, I suppose. Well, which I, my friend Greg had pointed out that uh, it might have been a little uh, wrong of me to suggest that wouldn't it be great if the Mets won uh, the whole thing? And uh, you know, I was I was feeling like it was going to make me feel better for them having you know if if the team that beat the Phillies went all the way, well then maybe I wouldn't feel so bad. Sure, but, sure, you know, I get that. That we're off. <laughs> <laughs> that that we're off. I'm good. Yeah. The uh, yeah. I mean, cause the the weird thing about like the Mets Yankees thing, right? And I I realize that when I say this, it is going to come off just as an elitist Yankees fan, and I really don't mean it that way. But Mets fans hate the Yankees, and they have rivalry with the Yankees for the Battle of the City and blah, 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 all of that shit. And Yankees fans don't care. <laughs> like, the, it's just not... It, the Yankees' rivalry is with the Red Sox or with the Astros or with the the Rays. Like it's not with the Mets. It it just it, it's not. It's very much a little brother thing. And like I totally it's like the get Thanos. You know, yeah, took I don't everything for me. I don't even know, uh, who, don't you even know who you are. Yeah, I I don't. Okay, I'm sorry. Like that sucks. And like I I understand how dickheadish that sounds and I, I really don't mean it to come off that way it's just never been a thing um mostly because the yankees and mets have so infrequently been very good at the same time you know what i mean like it's always been that when the mets were really really good the Yankees were terrible. And when the Yankees were really, really good, the Mets have been terrible. And then they met in the World Series once, and it didn't go very well for the Mets. Like, it was really <laughs> embarrassing. Um, you know, it, it it just was. And, yeah, it's just not, I don't know. It's just not a thing. I've never, let me, let me change that. I've <laughs> never known it to be a thing. As a Yankees fan who is friends with Yankees fans, I've never known it to be like, oh, fuck the Mets. You know, like, no, nah, cool. Mets are doing good. That's cool. Whatever. It's fine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, fuck, Chris. I don't know, man. It's been a weird week. This, this has been, um, th so far, uh, the most painful week, uh, that I've had. Um, so I got the uh, the the fifth infusion I got last Friday, so a week ago today, and I got it really early in the morning. Um, and usually I don't start feeling bad um, until like Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's when I when I start to feel bad, and I realize that the reason I start to feel bad Saturday night into Sunday morning is because I was getting the infusion later in the day. Um, by getting my infusion at eight o'clock in the fucking morning last week, by Saturday afternoon, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And what's, what's weird about it is that 
as an adult, when you say your stomach hurts, right? When you're like, oh man, just like my stomach hurts, you know, it's not the same as when you were a kid. Think back to when listeners close your eyes. Imagine if you will, when you were children and your stomach hurt, it was a very specific feeling that that was when you were a little kid, that kind of stabby pins and needly almost feeling in your stomach where your stomach, and it just does not feel that way as an adult, right? When you feel mm-hmm. sick as an adult, it's, it's just different. Um, so if you can imagine that sort of not feeling good, that's how I feel now. Because I, I, for whatever reason, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, when I say on those days that I don't feel well, I mean it like I meant it when I was eight. Of like, I just, I want to lay in bed and watch The Price is Right because I don't feel well. I want to stay home from school, you know? <laughs> and like, it, I feel like a little kid. It's weird. Um, and then the way the pattern goes is then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when the bone pain starts. And the bone pain this time was real fucking intense. It was really, really bad to the point where I, for the first time, have felt an extended period of neuropathy. Um, so neuropathy is one of the side effects of the chemo drugs where you basically get uh, pins and needles along with pain in your hands and your feet. Um, and I've had that now for, you know, it, it, it's not, it's not all day with the pain or the pins and needles. Um, but it is certainly more extended than it has been in the past. Um, to the point where like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't think I played any video games or did anything really with my hands cause they just hurt all day. Um, which sucked. And now today, it's like, okay, the bone pain is starting to go away so that the gastrointestinal issues can can move themselves in. It's just, fuck, man. It's just, uh And I told Tiff, like, earlier in the week, because I, I realized that I've been a lot more quiet at home um, these past couple of months. Like, I just haven't been talking as much because we had a couple things earlier in the week where one of the dogs that we're fostering had to go get spayed. So I had to drive the dog down um, to to the hospital where she was getting spayed. It's not a tips hospital where, where my aunt works. Um, and then another dog that we sent out on a trial, uh, one of the Anatolans that we still have, um, ended up not working out like... She was with another Anatolan and they got into a fight and one of the goats that they were protecting got caught in the middle of the fight. So the goat had to come in for surgery and like almost got its damn leg ripped off. Like it was bad. So I had to go like, I had to make a couple trips down to this other animal hospital where my aunt works. And it's about like half hour away, 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, depending on traffic or whatever. And as we're driving, like I, I, I turned to Tiff and I was like, I realized as we're driving and over these last couple of months, I am not talking as much. And I'm sorry about that. If you are taking it any certain type of way, please don't. Because when I talk now, it's either about me and where I am with my diagnosis, or it's just me bitching about being in pain. Like the only time it's not like that is after we do this introductory segment on the podcast. Like, that's it. Every other conversation I have with people is just about um, where I am, how I'm feeling, all of that stuff. And I was like, with you, I get to just be quiet. I was like, you know, and also I don't want to just bitch all the time. So that's kind of like, that's kind of been the week, you know, I, I haven't slept very much because it's woken me up in the middle of the night multiple times. Like I'll sleep for two hours and then my legs start hurting. So I got to get up and I got to move around, you know, and then I... What happens when you get up at three o'clock in the morning and start moving around? Well, I'm up. You don't get back to sleep. Yeah, that's right. I'm up now. Cool. I'll just be up for like another hour and a half and then I'll go to sleep for like two more hours. And it's just, ah, it's a fucking roller coaster, man. It is an absolute roller coaster because also at the Not same the time, kind. no, no, 
I mean, it's a roller coaster like when you're in your 50s and you're like, oh, that was a bad idea. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I read all. Yeah. I read all those warnings and I went, yeah, but clearly, I, clearly the leopards <laughs> are not going to eat my face. Um, it I must ate a bowl of some- mac and cheese and an ice cream cone, then got on a, on a roller coaster. That's right. I ate a bowl of mac and cheese ice cream and then got on mm. a roller coaster and was like, this would be a great, yeah. So, uh, but also like shit is working, you know, we're, we are moving in the right direction. It's just also getting cumulatively worse as we are moving in that direction. So it's like, uh, fuck. <laughs> All right. That's where we're at. <sighs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> my week was pretty different. My week was odd, but for a different reason, like. This was the first week I've had in, I can't remember when, where I wasn't overwhelmed. I, like... That's exciting. My workload... Yeah, it was. My workload was reasonable, and I, like... <laughs> I finished things, and was done, and was able to get a head start on, on other things, and just kind of, like... You know, I vacuumed. I, I, I straightened up things. I caught Ew. up on chores around the house. I, I uh, you know, cooked a little food. It was... It was, it was good. It was, it was a good week. And uh, I spent, you know, I got to spend some time playing video games, which was nice. Not a lot of different ones, but just, just generally speaking, my stress levels this week were a lot lower than they have been for quite some time. And that's really, really, really nice. That is exciting. It's really fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. It's, it's so weird when that happens now. When it's like, it is. is is everything okay? Because like I feel pretty good, and I shouldn't feel pretty good because the world is on fire. So yeah, what I'm the fuck here, am I missing? Like yes, I, I'm still very stressed out about like all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but uh, because uh, that's not uh, that's just moving right along, isn't it? <laughs> it's doing something. It's, it's like doing a, something. It's like a very slow bowel movement. It's just. All right, I gotta. Who does number two work for? Just a lot of. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, no. What did you play this week? Let's go. Hold with on that. a second. I just got. I the, the, the gambler just popperied popped, and I didn't get it on my phone. Why not? That's not okay. Hold on, I gotta find it on my desktop. Give me like two seconds, and then I can talk a little bit about what I played. Okay. So I got it on. It was forty three dollars and seventeen cents. Not insignificant. No, not insignificant. I got that times three, but why didn't I get it on my phone? It's very strange. Hmm. I must have must have not been spinning or something. Must have missed a missed a trigger in some way, shape, or form. Oh well, I'll live. Still decent a uh, decent chunk of change. Yeah. All right. So I've I've been playing uh been playing more Zelda. That's mm-hmm. been a uh, Going well enough. Hmm. Hold on one second. Duh, duh, duh. Sorry. Okay. Back in. Um, okay. Yeah. Back so in. I'm said Jesus. Playing a little bit more more Zelda, which is going very very well. I just kind of got to the point in the game where, it, like you know, like to the past, you do the first three dungeons and you get the pendants, and then you get the master sword, and then like the game kind of really opens up. Yeah. I just got to the the game opens up part. Um, oh, cool! I got got past the first three areas, and now I'm on to like the next chunk of things to do, and it's all been pretty interesting. Um, the uh, you have to fight you have to fight Ganon a, a second time. Okay, and uh, that was the Ganon. So, like, all right, I'm thinking of the Aghanim fight in Link to the Past, and it's like yeah, it's kind of neat. Uh, but meanwhile, okay. um, this Ganon fight was what I kind of figured that was. But it was, I'm not going to say it was hard, but it was like, it was more complex than I expected. Like, okay. he kept coming, and that was really cool. <laughs> it was a really, really cool boss battle. Because um, it's it's pig Ganon, right? It's classic blue pig Ganon, right. which is really nice to see. Um, and the, the I do love a blue been, pig. Uh, don't we all? <laughs> the story's been pretty interesting, like, just from a general, like, not, like, 
a deep story or anything like that. But sure. just it's it's playing with traditional Zelda lore in really fun ways. Like this whole Zora thing that I did, um you had a River Zora and um is it River Zora and Ocean Zora, I wanna say they called them. Okay. But um they were like the Zoras from Ocarina of Time are the ocean Zoras and the Zoras or Zolas from like the led link to the past type of Zoras. They're the river ones. And like those two, those two factions of Zora were feuding and we've never seen those two. We've never seen those two designs in the same game before. Right. So that, that was like, I don't know, just as a long time Zelda fan, that was a pretty neat thing to see. Like it's very nerdy, but whatever. <laughs> I, I thought <laughs> That's it was okay. super cool. I, I, I was really into it. It's allowed and, you know, to be nerdy. I got to a spot in the game where where I decided to travel first after the, everything kind of opened up. That I think I'm not like it's 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 definitely open like the original. Yeah. Uh, so it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you can I I think I went to an area that I'm not really supposed to be at yet because I've I've wound up with like three different echoes that I can't summon because I'm not strong enough. Okay. Which is pretty weird. Like, yeah. They, 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 so, like, oh, okay. Like, like I, in, I, a, in a sequence breaking kind of way, or? No, just as in, like, you know, when you're playing the original Legend of Zelda and you go into, like, level eight because you found it. Okay. And it's like, well, yeah. I mean, I could try to fight these things. <laughs> I could. Um, I'm not gonna. But, you know, since this game is this game, you can just kind of spam weird stuff to beat almost anything. Right, uh, like if you're creative enough, you can just kind of blow through whatever you need to. And uh, I wound up beating a couple of things, and I was like, "Oh man, that's that's like a level three Liz Alpha or something. That's pretty neat." And then I just, uh, um, well, I'm just losing my words here. I try, so I try to summon it, and the way the way it works, whenever you're summoning things, they cost a certain amount of little these little triangle icons, right? Okay. Like a, a little blob will be one, but a like a dark nut will be three, and the highest I can do is four. And these things all cost five. Now they're um as you power up in the game, um if you get one extra one at one point, one extra triangle to get up to four, you start the game with three. Uh but then you power up past that, like when your little tri character levels up, it'll mm-hmm. mean like these handful of things only take three like they'll lose a triangle like how many it takes to summon them. Right. So Okay. I'm hoping I'll be able to summon some of these things pretty soon, so... Because they're neat, but the game continues to impress me, just in, in its overall cleverness, and uh, the, the world design is really fun. It's it's just a really freaking good game. It's a <laughs> it's a genuine joy to play. And I wish well, I was that's playing awesome. It right now. I wish I was playing it pretty much all the time. That I, but, I've uh, been I've been somewhat surprised at the um lack of chatter that I've seen around it. Like, there was certainly hype when it came out, and people were like, this is really cool, and then it seemed to kind of die down, and I, I think I think a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that like, as a society, we are far more interested in the negative, you know, and there's certainly been a lot of that going around recently, but I have been a little bit surprised that I haven't seen just more traction and and perhaps it's just me it's my particular algorithm whatever the fuck it might be on social media i just i haven't seen a lot of talk about it i think it's um i honestly feel like because i i i have people in my circle that talk about it it's not like tears of the kingdom was but also none of the systems have the the same shared social media features anymore right uh, well Elon yeah, Musk yeah that's Twitter, fair. so now yeah. people can't just share cool videos of them doing ridiculous things anymore it's not as easy so you're just not seeing that as much which is a huge freaking bummer because that was great you know that 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 was where i you would see gameplay footage people doing weird things in games all the time right was a really fun thing to see on social media and yeah i really i really wish i really wish we could all decide which one we're moving to and and just do that already like can we yeah, just Yeah, I've been spending it, a decent amount of time on Blue Sky this week. Um, can, can like if that's the one, that's fine. Like can we just like make a collective decision like as almost, a 
nerd Almost community. Almost everyone I follow and like on Twitter has moved over to Blue Sky. So I think there's like maybe two or three accounts that I would be interested in that aren't there. But, you know, that's it's fine. It's, fine. Uh, it, it, it's, it's fun. It's uh, the block feature works. <laughs> the, <laughs> it's a it's a relatively positive place. It reminds me of what Twitter was like before it uh, all went to shit. So, yeah, which is fun and fine. I don't need to spend as much time on it as I do anyway. I'm Certainly. Just, you know, in a constant state of wanting to distract myself from the horrors of the world. Sure. But, uh, you know, <laughs> such is life. So, yeah, Zelda, big fat win. Um, I didn't get, a wa- get to watch the first episode of Dragon Ball Dima today. I'm a little little sad about that, but uh, I'll, I'll get around to it. I didn't even know that came it. out. Yeah, Netflix is airing the, the dub uh, oh. on a week-by-week basis. So it's just regular, I can just go on my Netflix accounts and watch the first uh, localized episode of Dragon Ball Dima, and that's... I'm pretty excited to do that, uh, but I didn't really, I didn't get a chance to today, because I was working on a handful of other things. Um, but I guess the uh, the thing that I was working on, uh, speaking of social media and, and stuff, um, since Twitter, so Twitter changed its blocking situation, yes. right? Elon, he doesn't want people to be able to block him anymore. Uh, so basically, if you block somebody, they can still like follow and see you and everything. So if they want to just you take just screenshots won't see of your that exactly yeah. If they want to take screenshots of your posts and then you know post about them with responses and put you on blast all over the internet, they can still do that. They've basically taken any and all teeth out of the uh, the the blocking system. Also, I think uh, the current terms of service are saying that everything you post. Any artwork or words that you post are being used to train AI. Uh, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been a pretty mass exodus over the last couple of days. Yeah. Uh, to anywhere except that hellscape. So, I wanted to be able to post things for Stone Age Gamer on a couple other places. So, I wanted to incorporate Threads and Blue Sky, because those seem to be the two that are gaining the most traction right now. Okay. Um... So, but in order to do that, like, I can't, you can't schedule posts on Blue Sky. So I looked into a a program called Buffer, which is like, kind of like what Hootsuite used to be. I looked into Hootsuite now, and it's like a hundred bucks a month, and it's Mm -hmm. for... Fuck all that. It's for very, very, like, if you're a business with, like, a team of social media people, that's what that's for now. Sure. And like, okay, that's not me, but that's (laughs) neat. Uh, so I, I mean, you are a business with a team of people. I am. <laughs> However, but, uh, not a not a team of social media people. No. Uh, so I found this program called Buffer, and it uh, also Hootsuite doesn't incorporate Blue Sky, but Buffer does. So now I can um, put in, I can make one post, and it'll automatically post to all of the every social media site that we're on, and I can kind of like um edit them individually okay as i go so um i just started a trial for it so you know give it for 14 days i talked to i talked to my boss about like if this works out can we pay the like 30 bucks a month to keep this going and um he said okay and i was like let me continue the trial first just to make sure it does what i want it to do and it's not right it's not perfect yet like i can't like so it's got this engage tab on the top where I can very mm-hmm. easily uh sort through and comment on um all of my uh Facebook and Instagram posts but just okay. those two. I can't answer anything on um like Twitter or Blue Sky on this program. So I still need to use the individual programs to respond to people. But it does have a pretty decent set of analytics on it like it'll show me what my uh you know reach and engagement is on every post that i'm making which is pretty nice that's uh, pretty that cool the, but the most Im- those are those are bonuses for me the the thing that makes me happiest is that i'm able to create a single post and just hit post and it'll schedule it for all those different things so i don't have to keep and going it'll to post? The different apps and it'll post how many times can i use the word post <laughs> in, in a sentence <laughs> Um, 
so that that was a lot of my day actually was messing with this program like uh creating a youtube short was kind of a pain in the ass because i would you know individually do youtube short and then go to tiktok and then go to facebook and now i can just upload the video once and i can tell it what to do on those three programs and then uh let it ride and that's okay. that's that's pretty that is a that is a pretty nice improvement over uh what i was doing before so hopefully this is going to save me some time um i, I do enjoy I all of the like productivity solutions that we have to make for these new problems that we discover as we're like oh all of these new things and features and stuff and things we can do oh, no it's fucked everything else up <laughs> now, now now i need to i need to fix all this other shit i had to ban somebody on facebook this week Ooh, yeah love a good ban hammer yeah you know what hey, you know uh, he was there, so go ahead i'm sorry he was pissing me off in the first place uh -huh. because the thing so one of the things i do every week is i post uh um covers from video game magazines from 30 years ago yeah. 30 years ago this month game pro had this on its cover right and this guy was just like where's the link you were like, talking where, about that yeah right 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 so he comes back again with the, his uh no uh, i i'm demanding this you need to do this and i responded no i i don't need to do this uh the internet's there and a handful of other people were commenting like what are you talking about like if you want to look up these magazines look up these magazines and this dude's going on this tirade about how it's a service thing like what if somebody went online to eBay and bought the physical magazine because they didn't know that they could find these the, these things, download them online? I'm like, good. Then I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, no. They get to read an original magazine in the format that it was intended? What a tragedy. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn. How fucking dare you? That? How dare you, Chris? How dare you encourage but reading? It came but to also, a But also, like, you're not... You're just posting the cover of the magazine. I know. I'm just trying to start a conversation about the, what was on the cover of this magazine 30 years ago. I'm not saying, here, go to this website where you can read this magazine. Buy like, this I'm magazine because it was fucking dope as shit and it had all these cool... Like, no. Look. In, wasn't this crazy? 30 years ago, this was on this magazine. And then the, the hopefully somebody pops in with like, oh, man, I fucking remember that. That shit was cool as hell. And then a conversation starts. It's like... That's it going online and saying like boy i really liked beetlejuice and then somebody like yeah but you didn't link to where i can download the whole movie what the fuck's wrong with you yeah what's wrong with you asshole? what you lazy you lazy piece of shit like he was calling me lazy for not <laughs> giving him links to, like what are you doing nah, just but ban him yeah. it really it, it hit the wall when he called one of our other uh one of the other people commenting on it a retard mm. yeah, that that's not word, a word we say anymore I, apparently it is that word has come up a lot i am seeing that word a lot of places lately and i don't really? know why people all of a sudden seem to think that's okay to just start calling people that now that's i don't weird. know where that decision was made but it is popping up a lot and it's freaking weird it i know it there there's a certain segment of people who are into this same hobby that we are into. Um, and they are just the worst fucking people alive. They just are. Like, I, and I, they just are. It's, it, fuck, fuck people who feel that way, act that way, use that word. Like, no, it's just not okay anymore. It's just, like, it's just not... We've moved past that as a society, right? We just have, and that's okay. I was watching a video earlier today of one of, uh, in my assumption, is one of the most successful Snap creators, uh, Jeff Hoogland. Um, and he posts a video every year, um, and he's been doing this for a while. Like, he did it last year for Snap, but he used to do it when he was a Magic the Gathering streamer. Um, and he talks about like his channel he talks about how much money he has spent on the uh on the game that he is playing and he talks about how much money he has made from the game that he is playing his he is a professional full-time streamer 
Um, but he started his video today and I thought it was so interesting. Um, he started his video today apologizing kind of for not apologizing about being political in his social media profiles, in his, um, videos and whatnot. Like he, he basically said like, I'm not going to debate you. I'm not going to allow you to do these things. If you're going to be an asshole, if you're going to be a fascist, if you could like, you don't deserve my platform to spread your bullshit on. Right. And that's exactly the way you should look at the stone age gamer thing. Like, no, you're just not going to do this. This is not a thing that we are going to encourage. And like, like I just said, the, the f- being nice doesn't get you as much engagement, but I don't care. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah, you no, know? I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't, I don't care about not getting engagement from, I don't, I don't care about not hate farming, which yeah. is again, like I was just talking about with being on blue sky. There's not a bunch of rage bait on there, at least not yeah, that's showing not up yet. in my feed. And that's, <laughs> yeah, not yet. I'm sure it'll get there. But there doesn't seem to be any reward for rage baiting. Yeah. Like, I, you know, since Twitter inc- basically incorporated a financial reward for rage baiting people, is like, uh, uh, I don't know. It, it seems to be working out pretty well for this dude, um, for, for Mr. Hoogland, because, uh, Last year, from uh, from all of his streaming, just Marvel Snap. I mean, he has like a couple videos on uh, the uh, on the Pokemon game that's coming out at the end of the month. Um, but he is a full time Snap creator. Uh, he made two hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars last year. Wow! Yeah, just full time streaming on Twitch. And like, what's what I find really interesting about him is that he also discloses how much he has spent on Marvel Snap throughout the year. So like he also spent and this is just like I'm going to say a number and it's absurd. Right? And when I tell you that information, I want you to tell me what you think that number might be. He made $259,000. How much do you think he spent on Marvel Snap uh throughout uh, the course of a year? $159,000. <laughs> well, no, obviously that's that's too crazy. He spent... Is it? Eight, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> yes. He spent $18,000 on Marvel Snap last year, buying credits and gold and, and stuff to upgrade his cards and, like, create content for his channel, you know? And that's just one dude spending $18,000 on a fucking mobile game. So, like, what we need to do, Chris, is come up with a mobile game, is what, <laughs> what I've figured out. I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> What what was the big titty anime girl? B tag? That's what it was. B tag. B tag. That's it. You just open cards of big titty anime girls and like they just battle each other and by battle each other I mean they touch their breasts together. And like we'll be fucking aggressively. They're great. Yeah. Well sometimes. <laughs> sometimes not. Sometimes <laughs> sensually. Depending on the fucking mood. I don't know. We'll be millionaires. <laughs> be fucking absurd. <laughs> Oh, Welcome man. to Sagby Tag. <laughs> Sagby Tag. There you go. Ah, oh, it's such a good idea, man. Yeah, no, fuck, fuck all that. Don't feel bad. Ban, ban that shit. That's no. no I no. just, I don't feel bad for banning him. I just feel bad that there was a situation where I had to ban somebody on our fucking video game page because they couldn't behave talking about <laughs> video game magazine covers from thirty years ago, like. Yeah. It's, it's weird, just one of those things. It's like, what are you? What are we doing? It's a what weird hill to die on, man. But like, all right, it really is good for you, man. It's wild. All right, all right. Okay, you feeling good? Feeling good. Feeling feeling fine. Feeling sexy. Okay, it's not true. That's but, good. Uh, no, you should. So on the show last week, yeah, as we were recording at the end, I got my code for hatch tails Mm -hmm. this is what i've been waiting for like that's why i wanted you to go first because i i I need to hear about hatch tails because i think i think what you're gonna say because and i've purposefully every time i've seen some some like messages about it in the discord pop up like i've been scrolling through them 
Um, and I think you're going to say that it's like the worst possible thing that it could be, which is that it's fine. Yeah, you're not far off. It's, it's honestly kind of heartbreaking is what it is because the exact thing, almost the exact thing that he promised is in there, Mm -hmm. right? The code that you can enter to play the original chicken wiggle wiggle levels in HD is there. Okay. And which is all you wanted. It's all I wanted. It's really, it's all I paid for. It's all I wanted. Didn't want all the rest of this. Now, Right. I'm on the second world in Hatchtails proper, and it is. It has some interesting ish design and interesting ish ideas. It okay. is a fun enough concept, right? But it doesn't have to be. A game does not have to be complicated to be good, right? Sure. And one of my favorite games ever is the Dadish series, and they're extremely simple games. Yeah. Tetris is a very simple game. Exactly. It, at its core, it is a very simple concept. One of the things that bothers me so much about Hatch Tales, besides the... this, I think the Hatch character is stupid. I think him and his, his, his hookshot is just a, a dumb-looking situation there. Mm-hmm. I think the, the chicken and the worm, it, it's, it's so whimsical, it's so creative... It's so colorful, it's so fun, and everything about Hatch Tales on a surface level is like, it's like t- looking at something that was really great to start with, that somebody then listened to a whole lot of bad advice about, mm. and is just a fraction of what it should be. Right. This game the looks The opposite cheap. of the Sonic movie. This this game looks cheap is my biggest one of my biggest concerns. Like I hate the art direction change and the um the overall tone of the game is like I'm I'm I'm, lo- I'm losing my I'm losing my train of thought here because I have so many different things I want to say <laughs> and I try to boil them down in in the right direction. So okay. there's even when playing the chicken wiggle levels, right? Mm-hmm. There's this overall feeling that, and it's, in, and it's in the music, is that things need to be more epic than they were. Okay. So when I listen to the chicken wiggle soundtrack, is great. It's just this. Yeah. There was this soul in that game that was like, this is a game that this guy came up with that he really wanted to make, and it came through in its visuals. And it's sound design, right? It just, it came through in every piece of it. It was this cute right. little thing made with love. Yeah. And when they were going to HDify that and just HDify what was there on the 3DS, that was fine. Right. I'm right? on board it was, with that. It's yeah. a small scale project. You don't need to add a whole bunch more animations. But if you remember way back, like seven ish years ago, when they were doing Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap, and Monster yeah. Boy, right? And then yeah. Monster Boy looked like a cheap Flash game. And then Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap showed that it looked like this stunningly gorgeous ha- animation. Monster Boy was like, we gotta up our game. because We gotta fix this, because this is embarrassing. This. Yeah, this is embarrassing. We It's like, we didn't even consider games could look this good. So, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And they did a good job. Mm-hmm. Hatch Tales... Is a much more and it's like Hatch Tales is basically the ambitious sequel to Chicken Wiggle that people would have wanted had they been given the chance to properly play Chicken Wiggle, right? Right. On a just from a level design gameplay standpoint, this game is the sequel to that game that you would have theoretically wanted, but okay. it's marred by this sort of epic overtones. Like it's the same sprite, except colored brown but he's got angry eyes the whole time yeah it's like trying to make kirby edgy it's like (laughs) right because he's always got the angry eyes of the box art back in the 90s and stuff like you're not gonna make kirby edgy it's it's just silly this is dumb so like all the music has this 
kind of weird epic tone to it instead of this like you're you're no longer collecting the letters f u n you're collecting these flaming emblem things you're like, just collecting the f and the u yeah like, just oh. the fuck you it, it's <laughs> It feels like something that's trying that f- that's trying to be something it didn't need to be, and it feels that way because that's what Jules Watson it told. Is. That's exactly what he said. Like Chicken Wiggle didn't sell because it wasn't you know it was too cute. That is not why it didn't sell. Yeah, that's not it. It's just not it. Like you didn't need to change this adorable you know, duo that you invented here and turn it into something that's slightly more edgy. Like that's. That's not your problem. Your problem was you were on 3DS when nobody wanted to play 3DS anymore. And it wasn't a problem unique to you. This is provable. You can look at this and say, (laughs) Metroid didn't sell on 3DS. Right. So, Chicken Wiggle didn't have much of a shot either. Like, that's what the problem was. And it was super obvious that that's what the problem was. And if he had just made what he did, if he just did the Chicken Wiggle... Re- HD remaster for Switch. Just released that at a decent price point early on. The, the, you probably would have done something, right? Because it still wouldn't have sold very well. No, it would have sold gangbusters, <laughs> but it would have sold better than it did on the 3DS. Sure. If it had managed to get there early enough on the Switch eShop, Atui has enough name brand recognition, and this is a clever enough game that it probably would have done something. And if he had these ideas for this sequel to it, that would have been all the better. But now we have this thing where you've got a decent game that's being held. Like, visually speaking, there's no excuse for this anymore. Indie games right. don't look like this anymore. They just don't. Right. Like, you can look at even something as simple as the $5 Dadish games, right? Those don't aren't look like, like that. They don't look like they don't move like this. There's. Uh, a shocking lack of animation in everything. There's, you know, these high definition detailed images that are animated with two frames of animation. Like there's a yeah, bat, it's not, and the it's entire not work for me, dog. the bats flying is just two frames of animation swapping back and forth. Now, when Chicken Wiggle was on 3DS, and that was a pixelated sprite, right? It that, worked to look like an old, uh, you know, NES slash Super NES era right. thing. You can pull that off. That's a look that works because of its art style. But when you right. clean that up into something that looks like pretty nice looking hand drawn stuff that animates like a, a four, like I think uh, Hatch's animation for when he's walking is like four or five frames or something like that. It's it doesn't work. The whole world, the whole game looks cheap, and it's super unfortunate. The the whole gimmick of uh there's this thing where you can find these cracks in space time and you can peck at them and then go into this dark world version of what you're playing it's like yeah. super mario 2 with the potions i f- he put that in the trailers like it was some like big revelation or some yeah. like super creative thing he did and it's like dude we've been doing light world dark we like you're basically doing this the isn't space from mario yeah. 2 and you're not doing it very well it's it, i've been to like three of those areas so far and they have added absolutely nothing just yeah. absolutely nothing to what i was doing it's much like um you know the the best of mutant muds it's frustrating but it makes you want to keep going but right. just its overall presentation is just I, I it makes me so sad because of because i know what it could be and i know what it should be and i know the story behind it and that's what makes this kind of a bummer um, it it really just seems like he, and this is just from interviews that I've read with him and, and seen him speak and whatever, he really thinks that this game, both in its original form and this new form, are the greatest fucking thing ever, and the rest of us are really stupid for not recognizing that. Like, that's how all of this is coming off from him. And what I find so interesting about that is that the the ability to hold that opinion for both things of Chicken Wiggle was fucking amazing, and you're all idiots for not playing it. But this new thing I did that now all of you don't want is so much better 
that you're also idiots for not wanting that. And that's I, a really I'm, weird, like, dichotomy to have. I'm curious what this game's going to do when it hits the eShop on the 22nd, right? Because it's not on the eShop yet. It's, you can't buy it yet. The only people who are playing it right now are the people who did the uh, the Kickstarter. So at least we right. got our copies early, which is nice. Right. But I'm, so that you can tell everybody sh- not to buy it. I shudder to think what's going to happen when this game drops on the eShop with absolutely no fanfare. Right. And doesn't sell. Looking like a Flash game. Because, like, that, that, when Gimmick 2, right? Gimmick 2 was getting ready to come out, and there were people saying, we saw it in our Discord, I saw it on our social media. People were saying, this looks like a cheap Flash game, why would I buy that? And, no, Gimmick 2, you you are mistaken. It's like when people say, like, a a new PS4 game looks like a PS2 game. You don't remember what PS2 games look (laughs) like. Like, I know you think you do, but you don't. And... If you're saying and just because it's looks- bright and colorful does not like the one comparison I saw a lot was to cut the rope, that fucking alligator thing. Right. And like, yeah. I see what I see what you're going for. I see why you might think that I get it. But gimmick is one of those games that when you play it and you see it in motion, it's like, oh, OK, it's not that. I get yeah, it. 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 It doesn't it doesn't do that. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't move right. like a cheap flash game. It, it has been animated intelligently. The Hatch Tales moves like a cheap Flash game. Its presentation is not doing it any justice. Now, That's argue all you want about the name of Hatch Tales versus Chicken Wiggle. I know Chicken Wiggle is a very silly name. I thought that part of, that was part of That's what part gave of the it charm. its personality. Part yeah. of its charm. But Hatch Tales, I think it's a bland name, but it's not a terrible name. Right. So It's arguably a better name. Even if they had just stopped there, I would have been okay with it. But they didn't. They turned it into this... Right? You see a bright yellow bird with a worm and a backpack. Like, that is interesting. You see a brown bird with angry eyes with a hook shot. There's nothing interesting about that. It's less interesting. It's way less interesting. And that's, that's what this is. It's like, okay... If I'm ignoring this now, you can play the game Hatch Tales as the Chicken Wiggle characters. You can right. do that because they're functionally the same. They just don't look the same, uh, except the Chicken Wiggle characters are hard mode. Just <laughs> like the original Chicken Wiggle, you don't have any, like, you can't take more than one hit. So. Also feels like kind of a fuck you. If it does feel honest. like kind of a fuck you. It, it does because, you know, I'm I'm old and I have nothing to prove, so. As right. much as I'd rather be playing the game like that, this isn't a Tui game. It's hard. Mutant Muds right. was is a hard game, right? This they don't make super easy games. It's kind of what they're known for. Uh, so having that extra hit is really helpful. So I'm playing the game as this brown hatch character, and it's making me sad <laughs> the, whole, yeah. the whole time I'm playing it. But I'm not. You know, it, it's it's not enough to make me stop playing it. Like. I want sure. to get through the game. I want to see what else it has to offer because it does do some like the I can't find some of the hidden items, which is kind of frustrating because some of the hidden items are very much like this is pixel hunting is what we're doing here. There's there isn't anything in the level that says, oh, no, you got to try right. this out. This is how you're right. going to find this. That's not how that works. They we're we're talking about like just whip everywhere and see if you can walk through this this corner of a wall because there is there's no other way to find these things they're just they're not which is annoying in intuitive yeah. places yeah it's a little annoying it's not the end of the world but it is a little it's annoying. not but it, it it's also a game design that we've kind of grown away from right yeah. as the as the game um as the gaming space has kind of grown up We've kind of stopped being assholes about that kind of thing, you know. Just a little bit, just but, a little you know, bit. Then, yeah, but that then that could just be some me shit because I've been in their Discord and people are just thrilled about this 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 well, uh, situation. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, it is it is distressingly mediocre. Given th- knowing the story, like they didn't right. work six and a half years or whatever, six or seven years to make this game. That's not what happened. They clearly (laughs) did what they set out to do. And then 
fucked off and did a bunch of other stuff because they lost motivation. But right. then they were beholden to the Kickstarter backers, like, well, you got to produce something. And they decided to get super ambitious and basically make a sequel to it. And like, okay, that's neat. But how about you just give us this thing first? How about you give us the thing that we that you asked us to give you money to do first? Yeah. Get that done. Get that out into the world. And if you're then inspired to make this sequel, go then nuts. go for it. Then go yeah. nuts. Because he said on in, in the, the Kickstarter uh, email, he thinks this is the best work he's ever done. And I don't know that I can argue with that. I mean, my favorite Atui thing is um, Zeo Drifter. Right. Like, but, you know, Mutant Muds is really good, too. Sure. Uh, and I, I, I love Totes the Goat, even though it is a, it's just Qbert. Like, right. Still don't really understand how that works. Like, that's literally Qbert <laughs> with different characters. Like, I but guess that's they fine. Just, I guess they just, they don't have a copyright to that specific gameplay, so anyone can do right. it. Um, but still, well, yeah, it was because well there done. Was, there was another one that did that. I forget what the fuck it was. It doesn't matter. And anyways, I'm never buying anything from this company again. They have lost my business for life, which is a bummer because this isn't a bad game. Uh, right. It's a bad game that's buried under some pretty lackluster stuff that I think is going to very quickly prove to not be successful. Uh, I'm, maybe I'm going to be wrong. Maybe the game will sell just fine, but I have a suspicion that this is going to hit the eShop with a big old thud because it doesn't look like the kind of game that like, what are the indie games that are really breaking through right now? What are the, the, the games that show up on, on the eShop or steam that right. break through? You're looking at really creative, interesting looking stuff like plucky squire. Right. Right. Vampire this survivors, is, which is this v- new thing. That's insane. Yeah, or even something like Daddish, which just takes a tried and true formula and executes it with a a distinct personality that makes it fun. This does not have that. And going back and playing the chicken wiggle levels and being like, yeah, this this is just this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to play this right. on my television. And it's nice to be able to do that. But at the same token, like when I'm listening to the new versions of the original Chicken Wiggle soundtrack and like they just don't have that same soul to them, mm-hmm. there is some unbelievably beautiful music on the original Chicken Wiggle for 3DS, which is it's such an absurd name. So saying that and <laughs> with with reverence like that just feels silly, yeah. but it's oh, Chicken Wiggle. <laughs> Oh, good old chicken wiggle. But there was, <laughs> there's some really, really like it. I'm talking like the kind of yeah. classic chip tuny music that stops me in my tracks, like that yeah. kind of stuff. And the new versions of it, they tried to make that music sound jaunty and epic, and it just kind of takes away all of the the wonderful like feeling that was in this simple game, like the beauty of that game's simplicity was what made me so happy about it. It was it was the same kind of joy I got out of Daddish, where it's like, here's this thing that's just crazy simple. There is nothing complicated about this at all. It's just fun and executed with a degree of love. And that's what Chicken Wiggle was. And they just took all of that out of it to make hatch tales like, no, our gameplay element's really cool, you just didn't notice because our character wasn't edgy enough. So now our bird's got angry eyes, and there's no worm. It's a hook shot. <laughs> and there's like that's a big, what I'm saying. You know, a like big it, snow demon, and he's he's like big evil yeah. snow demon. And you're gonna save the day. And you're gonna go on this epic adventure. Like no, no, no. Nothing about this needed to be epic. Nothing needed. To Nothing. Be, keep that word far away from this game. You had this beautiful small scale thing that didn't catch on only because of where it was that was if the, he had released chicken wiggle in the first place on the eShop right when the switch launched like within the first couple of months that game would have sold gangbusters because that's what happened with mutant muds mutant muds hit when the 3ds eShop was in its infancy and it was right. a competent well-made game that played to the strength of the system when there wasn't a ton of other games just like it out there and it sold like crazy because like it was that's the what right people thing were looking right for. Yeah. So what people were looking for is the right thing at the right time. And at the early days of the Switch eShop, 
everything was selling like gangbusters because there was nothing there. If he had made that decision to move Chicken Wiggle development, just take it off of 3DS, don't HDFI it, don't go crazy with it, just put the pixelated graphics and everything, just like Blaster Master Zero, throw that on the Switch eShop when he when that was launching that would have done so well with a goofy ass name like chicken wiggle with the name of mm-hmm. mutant muds and to a uh, tui behind it that would have done great because people would have been able to, to experience that gameplay as intended because the gameplay hook is good the whole like jumping and pecking and using the worm to like latch onto things like a hook shot right the, the gameplay loop is solid the whole thing is sound it's just timing and a his poor attitude from its creator and <laughs> yeah ah, it's such a bummer man it really is you know it so one of the games that i've been playing um this week was sent to me uh by one of our listeners um and i forget who sent it to me i i think it was reformat um sent it to me i i, I should have written this down but i can't fucking remember shit right now um, I think it's a game that you've talked about as well, Chris. Um, Goliath Depot. Yeah, Goliath Depot. Yeah, sent it to me. Um, I've played it a bunch this week. It's fucking awesome. It's it's fucking great. It's we an were old talking school- to John Hancock about that. That's yes. the game that we were talking about. We're like the gameplay in this is great. There's just something off about its presentation. Yeah, it's it's a little weird. Um, and like, I think it. The main I, character isn't very interesting looking and like just the world nerdy. itself the world itself isn't very whimsical. Like when comparing it to something like Donut Dodo, where you just right. have this like that's what arcade games in the eighties were, like just pure insanity. And this is like I'm a dude in a warehouse. Yeah. I kinda dig that about it though. And and kind of to the point, like the reason that I bring it up, one, because it's something that I've been playing, and thank you for sending it to me. Um, because it's really great. It plays really well on the Steam Deck. Obviously, it's not, like, pushing a lot of pixels or whatever. Um, but what mm. what I like about it so much is that it is not trying to be anything that it is not. Yeah. It is It is 100% an old-school arcade game. That is what it is. That is what it is trying to be. It does it really, really fucking well. It's got a fun gameplay loop. There's cool stuff to unlock. It controls well. It looks it looks great. Like, just be what you are. It's okay. There are like, it's okay. A lot of us want that kind of thing. You know, you certainly, Chris. I mean, way more than me. Um, are are much more into that style of game at this point in your life, because that's what you have time for. That's what, you know, like you're, you don't want to play 12 breath of the wilds every year. No, (laughs) like, that's just not a thing that you're interested in, you know? And it's really not a thing that I'm interested in either. Like the, the two games that I spent the most time with this week were, um, were Goliath Depot. Um, and uh, uh, nuclear blaze, right? Let me j- let me just make sure I'm getting that name right. <laughs> oh man, it really it has been so fucking frustrating. I cannot I cannot begin to tell you how frustrating this is. Um, because this was also sent to me uh, by one of our listeners, and again I fucking forget, and I have it written down, and like I w- I said thank you in the discord when you sent it. <laughs> so that's, that's I feel good there. Um, nuclear blaze, uh, which is a game that is made by the dude who made dead cells. Um, and you are a firefighter and you show up to like put out a fire and you continue to progress like deeper and deeper into this weird military complex and there's like this weird story that's unfolding as you play through it. And it is so fucking engaging. Like I'm having such a blast playing this game. I cannot tell you what the story is about right now. Um, other than like, there's just some weird shit happening, but it, it is a game that does one thing, right? You are a firefighter as you were going through the, uh, through the levels and whatnot. You obviously are putting out, fires as you come across them and there's like 
some element, like not, I'm going to say Metroidvania only because there's like an upgrade kind of thing that happens as you're playing through it. Not that you're going back to other sections. Although I do think that is happening because there are cats to rescue in this complex. Um, I've only rescued two of them so far, but um, like as you're starting out, you can't shoot up or on a diagonal. And then that's an upgrade that you get. So you're going through and like you're putting out these fires and you have to conserve your water because there's water refill stations all throughout this complex um, for some reason. <laughs> they were, if we ever get on fire, we're going to need a lot of water. Um, but like you have to manage your water consumption as you're making your way through this world. And it's super engaging and really well done. It looks great. I believe it is out on, like, Switch and everywhere. Um, I just don't think it made much of a a, a dent. Because I had never heard of it. Heard of it. And apparently uh, this game again? Nuclear Blaze. Nuclear Blaze. Yeah. Apparently it's been out for a couple of years. Hmm. And like I said, this got sent to me, and I was like, what a cool fucking game this is like this is really neat and interesting and it's different and like i was a little concerned because i don't like dead cells um and i know like i'm super in the minority on that but i was like all right creator dead cells like that's fine i guess um but yeah like really engaging really really cool game like i am actively excited to go deeper and deeper into this very strange world like why this firefighter is embarking on this descent into this weird military complex is ah oh, it's really fucking cool man it looks really neat it's really good it's really really good Has so i've had visual style than hatch tales does i i have had a blast with those two games this week just an absolute blast i mean i've been playing baseball snap put like a new mode in called high voltage that's pretty fun um but the one thing that I started doing, um, and I realized it was like, I realized it was a thing that I wanted to do a little bit differently. So, as we all know, um, in the world we live in today, there is a fair amount of schmemulation that happens. Uh, you know, just in the uh, yes, in the essence of preserving games. But also just like, it's a thing I can get, so I got it, right? Um, so when you look at the uh, the schmemulators that I have on my computer and the schmoms that go with them, it's everything, right? It's absolutely everything that was ever released. And I don't think, I don't think it's different for most people. I think most people do that. And I was like, all right, so one of the things that the Steam Deck can do is it can run um, emulated games, right? Okay. Simulated games. Shme Sorry. Oh my god! I said the word. Um, <laughs> strike one. Sorry, Ryan. Um, <laughs> he gets very mad at me when I say the e word. Um, so it can run emulated games. And I was like, all right, well, let me. You know, let me because there's a process you have to go through. You have to put your Steam Deck into desktop mode and like load a program. And because it is, it is a portable computer. Like it, it's not just a video game player. It is a portable computer. Um, but I didn't have a mouse yet. Um, I didn't have a Bluetooth mouse. I just went and picked one up today, uh, cause I had to run as a fucking, can we just have a quick aside here, Chris, just as a quick aside. Okay. I don't know if this is happening by where you live, but I went to Walmart today. I hate going to Walmart, but I went to Walmart because after I picked up my prescriptions at CVS, I needed um, I needed some Senecop Plus, uh, because, you know, GI issues, and I needed some Pepsid Complete, okay? Because my stomach, for the next couple of days, is going to be super fucked up. It's a side effect of the chemo. It happens every week. We talked about it earlier. I ran out, so I needed to get it. So I was like, oh, let me get this. At, you know, I'm here at CVS. I'm picking up my prescriptions. Um, I'll just grab the Senecop and the, uh, and the fucking Pepsid. And then I looked at the bottle of Senecott, and it was uh, $30, was the cheapest bottle that they had. And I went, well, that's a $5 bottle at Walmart, so off to Walmart I go. <laughs> um, so I went to Walmart, 
and I got the Senecot, but the Pepsid, the Pepsid Complete that I need, is locked in a case. Are stores by you locking things in cases yet, Chris? I mean, yeah, but I haven't seen them lock Pepsid in there yet. Okay. Uh, vanilla extract has been locked up for a while. What um, the fuck is happening? Who's out there fucking stealing vanilla extract to a level that it needs to be locked up? I don't know, Dan. I it, don't know, and it's fucking weird. Like, the, so the Walmart by me, and I, I didn't look really through the rest of the store, because um, I don't want to be there. Like, I don't feel well. Like, I don't feel well, and I'm in Walmart. Like, this is already <laughs> a fucking bad situation, right? So, But I, but I need the fucking Pepsi. And it's locked in in the case. All all the the um, Gas X and Pepsid and Pepto, all of that shit is locked in a glass case. So I hit the little button, and a Walmart associate will be with you shortly. And five minutes later, I hit the little button again. It's like okay, you know, it's Walmart. They don't have a ton of people working because why would they? Um, Uncle Sam's got to make his money. Obviously, I hit the button again. It's five minutes. It's like, all right, so I've been standing here for 10 minutes. So I go over, it's right by the pharmacy counter. I walk over to the pharmacy. I'm like, hey, do you happen to have um, a key for this? I'm just trying to get some Pepsi. I, I don't feel well. I'm, I, I would like to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. And she was like, no, I don't, but I'll page somebody for you. So she pages somebody like on the whole store intercom. Associate with a key, customer needs assistant in, in whatever aisle, wherever the fuck I was. So 10 minutes later, go by. And she looks over at me and she's like, nobody's come over there yet? And I said, no. And at that point, like, you know me, Chris. I am not rude to people in public. Like, specifically people that are working at their shit job. Right. I know it's a shit job. I'm not trying to be mad at you. But my tone by that, uh, after standing in this aisle on legs that hurt... <laughs> needing this Pepsi. I, after 20 minutes, I was like, no, no, they haven't. She was like, all right, let me page somebody again. So she pages somebody again. And five more minutes go by. So I hit the fucking button again. And five more minutes go by. And 40 minutes later, I happened to see somebody walking down the aisle and I was like, miss, do you have a fucking key for this thing? And she looked at me and I was like, I'm sorry. I've been standing here for 40 minutes. I am in a lot of pain. Do you have a fucking key for this thing to open it? And she was like, I do. I said, Please open the case so I can have Pepsi and I can go the fuck home before I lose it. And she was like, I am so sorry. I said, no, I know it's not you and I'm not yelling at you, but I am Oh, so fucking angry. like I'm cursing and there's people like that is just not a thing I do. You right. know what I mean? Like for as for as ridiculous as I am on this show, it is partially a somewhat of a character. It's, you know, everything is turned up a little bit, but like that is just not how I behave in public. I'm an adult. I understand what it's like to work. Re anyway, stop locking shit up. It's fucking weird. I don't get it. Why did you lock up the Pepsi? If somebody steals Pepsid, they need it more than you. I'm sorry. Like, don't steal. Stealing is bad. But also, if somebody steals Pepsid, they probably needed it more than you did. Like, it's okay. You know what I mean? Anyway, fucking sorry. Aside. The fuck was I talking? So, Bluetooth mouse. So, I, so I got the Bluetooth mouse while I was at Walmart today. You were doing the weave. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I was doing the weave. See, what I do, it's very intelligent. People are saying, I weave back and forth and I come back. To the point, tears in their eyes. Big strong points. Big strong. Are you watching SNL? Dude is fucking no. killing it. Oh my god, it's uh, SNL is so good right now. Dana Carvey's Joe Biden. It's fucking hilarious. It's <laughs> uh, it's really really good. The dude that they have doing Trump. It's very funny. They were <laughs> they eating mudang. Anyway, um, they did last week's cold open was that the only uh, debate. Because Trump wouldn't agree to debate Harris again, the only way that he would agree to appear with her uh, on stage was at the family feud. So they did the Republicans and Democrats family. It was fucking great. Anyway, <laughs> SNL is killing it right now. It's very, very funny. So got the Bluetooth mouse today um, because I realized 
as I copied things over to the because uh, we got the the one terabyte uh, SD card, micro SD, to go in the Steam Deck as well. I was like, all right, so I can schmemulate all this shit on here and never come close to having a terabyte filled up. I moved everything that I had for NES and SNES to the uh, to the Steam Deck. And then I started looking at it and I was like, I don't actually want 2,000 fucking games on here. Like, I'm never going to play them. So I started getting into this week looking through the lists of things that I have and trying to come up with, like, what are the essentials? You know, not just like what I necessarily would want to play, but if if this was a thing you were going to do, right? Because we did our Stone Age starter kits, but what would our essential lists be? And that's kind of the question I've been wrestling with over the last couple of days. And I'm finding it interesting for me, I have way more essentials on the NES than I do on the Super NES. Like, really? way more. Yeah. And I found that kind of interesting. So I think that's something. It's a little tease there. It's not a, no longer a weave. Now we're officially teasing. Um, I think that's something that we should maybe discuss in the future as a recurring segment. Then we do, because it just, it really got me thinking about it too. And I would be really curious to hear from listeners as well. You know, like when you're thinking about the NES, not to like spoil it or go too deep into it, but there are just some without question essential games that should be on there. But if you like set some rules for yourself of like, you know, one game that represents the franchise, now it's a little bit more interesting, you know? Right. So, anyway. No, I like that. Yeah, I just found that kind of an interesting thing, like, looking at at the, you know, the collection of your versus curation, I guess, would be the best way to put that, of, like, what do I actually want accessible on the Steam Deck from these various systems? You know, I don't want every TurboGrafx-16 game, but I want Blazing Lasers, and I want Legendary Axe, and I want Splatterhouse. For sure, I want those, you know. are there? Is there anything else that is essential to that platform to get the most experience? Kind of an interesting place I found myself. Hmm. I mean, I feel like we've, we've def- definitely talked about an idea similar to that in the past, and I, I, I think there's merit to it. I think that would be a really fun conversation to have. Yeah. You know, do you do, like, what, 10 games? Like, where where do you put the limit, right? Because we're not going to go, like, here's the 20 games you need to have. Here are the 55 <laughs> NES games that are essential for you. Yeah, certainly. I think I think 10, you know? I think we do like something that. weirder, like 12. <laughs> That's fine. I'm good with that. Stone <laughs> Age dozen. Just make it to 14 so that, you know, when we get to Virtual Boy, you can just say all of them. All of them. <laughs> I don't know. We we just we need the name first, and then we'll go through the segment. But right, yeah, just that, kind that of makes in, sense. Yeah, it was just kind of like an interesting having all of these games, except like Steam Deck being such a cool, interesting system with all of these games already available, and then wanting to have those kind of comfort food games for when you know, like a, a night like tonight, if we weren't recording, I'm not feeling well. You know, if the Yankees game wasn't on and I want to play a video game just to kind of like, I don't want to play Vampire Survivors right now because like that I have to actively, you know, engage and I'm trying to unlock things. But like going back to that, that comfort food, you know, am I playing Marble Madness? You know, maybe things like that. I don't know. Just kind of an interesting, interesting thing. Hmm. I like it. Yeah. I it fucking sounds like a motherfucker. I see a musical humdinger. <laughs> Weave all over this bitch. And that's it. That's what I got, Chris. That's where I'm at. Well, I like what you got. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was all I had, too. So, um... Take ourselves I guess a quick we'll, break. We'll, yeah, we're gonna move on. We're gonna take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about what's new at Stone Age Gamer and go over week old news and then go to bed. If you're listening to Stone right. Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com, stick around.
And now here's a quick look at what's new from us and our partners at Geekade.com. First up, can you believe those motherfuckers, I'll say it, Kamala didn't say it, I'll say it. Can you believe those motherfuckers over at this week's episode haven't recorded a new episode yet? They were supposed to watch Northern Exposure like a month ago, but they skipped September's episode. And here we are, almost at the end of October, and they still haven't made this shit happen. It's called this week's episode, not whatever the hell I want's episode. Will they talk about a moose walking the streets of Alaska? Does the show live up to its reputation? Spoilers, it does. It's fucking dope. You'll have to wait to find out, because they'll record it at some fucking point, I imagine. Oh, right. There was no episode title on that. No, because <laughs> you didn't record it. <laughs> I didn't record it, because it doesn't happen yet. Because it hasn't now, happened. I'm, I'm now in season two of Northern Exposure, but... It's so good. It's such a good show. I... I, I mean, it's not quite clicking with me yet. Uh, but you like watched a whole season. On. Yeah, but the season wasn't very long. I think the first season was like eight episodes or something. That and is like, so I, much I can, more than I would commit to a show. I gave that, that Netflix show Gods two episodes and went, now nope, this shit's not for me. I'm out. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, Mr. Chaos? Goldblum. Chaos. Sorry. Yeah. Chaos. What did I say it was? Gods? Gods. Probably yeah, I don't know. Better that, name because I, I couldn't remember the name of that show for the life of me. And yeah, we watched two episodes. Good. I was like, "This is okay." It, yeah, I could see I, this being. I don't need to know anymore. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm definitely not going to watch any more of it now. <laughs> I thought it's been canceled, but no. Northern Exposure is, is is an interesting show. I don't know what to make of a uh, like. Uh, what is it? Holling is that one guy's name? The bar, the bartender who's oh, got I don't like fucking remember? Yeah, the, the 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 girl who's dating a girl like a quarter of his age. Like yeah. that's a little weird. I but, mean, you know, it's Alaska. Okay, take what you can get. Guess that's how they do things in Alaska. It it's, it's charming. It's charming and it's interesting. And it seems to be consistently getting weirder the more I watch it. It so is I'm, a it is a weird, consistently weird show. I want to know wh what the show becomes once it gets its footing, right? Because I've watched yeah. the first season, and you know, first seasons of shows, especially you know, older shows like this, they, 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 clearly it stayed on the air for a long time for a reason. So I'm going to stick with it. But anyways, I mean, Lois and Clark stayed on the air for a long time, and that show blows. Anyway, <laughs> come on, Dean Kane. What could be bad? Even then, I knew. <laughs> plot. I hated that show. Next anyway. up, nothing says JRPG quite like orange vests and dogs. At least that's what I've always thought. Squaresoft Secret of Mana was quite the successful little game, but it severely lacked in the orange vest and dog department. Thankfully for us all, Square decided to make an action RPG just for the American audience, and that game is... Vests and Dogs Secret of Evermore. How good is it? Why hasn't it shot up in value like most things that say Squaresoft on them do? Learn all about it in the SNES podcast, episode 243, The Secret of Evermore. I mean, I knew what game you were talking about, but as soon as you said Orange Vest, I really just want a JRPG of uh, What About Bob now? <laughs> I thought you were going to say <laughs> Dean. That was, well, obviously. Obviously. It's a DRPG. <sighs> <laughs> There's your episode. Genre. There's your episode <laughs> title. It's a DRPG. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> oh fuck me! Finally, the people at a theater near you have watched uh, just a lot of movies. Like, honestly, it's let's watch all of the Rocky movies. Like, who fucking says that? It's weird. Anyway, many of them have been good, and many of them have been bad. But nothing, nothing could have prepared Sean, Paul, and Chris for modern problems. It's a 1981 Chevy Chase vehicle uh, that involves him driving behind a nuclear waste truck. Uh, just as an aside, it is now 6-2 to two Yankees because Giancarlo Stanton is a fucking G. Fucking love this guy. Three-run home run. Uh, what was I saying? It's a 1981 Chevy Chase vehicle that involves him driving behind a nuclear waste truck and getting superpowers instead of cancer. If you've ever seen the movie Zapped, uh, you know what kind of depravity you're in for. 
Enjoy the suffering of others in a theater near you. Episode 45, Modern Problems. Modern-ish problems. Modern adjacent. The name doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. It was one it has, of the many problems with that movie was that its title was made one of no the many sense. modern problems. Was that the naming convention was fucking weird? Yeah. Like when I say that Chevy Chase's character is so deeply unlikable in this movie, in a movie filled with unlikable characters, there were no likable characters in the whole movie. No one to root for. No. Chevy Chase it, in particular was just che- Chevy Chase awful. is. Deeply unlikable. He is, but in his older movies, like, you know, the Lash Lampoons, uh, the, the Vacation movies, like Fletch, like... That's it! Were... Th- those movies. Oh, those are the ones. He's perfectly likable in Caddyshack, like... Ugh, I he, fucking hate Caddyshack. How I'm dare not, you? I'm not uber fond of Caddyshack, like a lot of people are, but he was perfectly fine in that movie. He wasn't... Like, this guy's whole thing is he's so deeply jealous of his fiance that he, he's driven her away because he's jealous of everything that she does and he refuses to get better in any way, shape, or form throughout the movie. And it's also billed as a comedy that is just blatantly unfunny. Yeah. And you'd think that when he's driving in his car and there's like nuclear waste shooting out of a truck and he's not pulling over, he's just like wiping it out of his eyes. Like, that should be kind of sort of funny. But should then he be. gets superpowers, right? This is like a half an hour or so into the movie. I didn't know this was a movie about someone getting superpowers. And then he gets superpowers and could, proceeds to do like, he like blows up this guy's dick in an opera. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's funny. On stage. So, like, his girlfriend, the, the, yeah. the girl that he's into is there with this new guy, and so instead of doing something to them, he ruins the stage play by making a bunch of people, like, fly around, and then he just blows up this guy's crotch. Like, <laughs> what's happening? Why is the, any of this... This movie was so bad. This movie was so bad. I was so angry when we were done watching it. it yeah, so those bad. are... That's hours of your life you're not getting back. Really, really Hours. bad stuff. But anyway, for, for all this and really more from us and our partners, bad eggs. be sure to keep your eyes as far away from modern problems as possible. And on geekade.com. We are back. It is time uh, to talk about what's new at the world in the world of Stone Age Gamer, and really, it's we're just we're prepping for the holidays. That's what we're doing. I don't think there were any other major products that came in this week. I mean, I'm drawing a blank um, on any sort of major new products, but we've been doing a lot of work on getting all of our weekly sales for November in and happening. The Turquoise Friday and <laughs> Purple Friday and Magenta Friday and all the ridiculous stuff that we do, which is fun. I love all um, that shit. I, I, I enjoy it, too, and we're getting an, a super early head start on it, which is making me very, very happy, um, because November tends to be a pretty stressful month uh, for for me in the social sure. media department, and uh, I'm, I'm already pretty pretty far ahead on that, so hooray! Yeah, that's, uh, that's all that's really going on at SAG this week. A lot, a lot of preparations. So with that, it is time for my favorite segment, for your favorite segment, for everybody's segment, favorite segment, strap in for Week Old News. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Week Old News, where we talk about all the news that was new a week ago. And first up, we have a story from Destructoid. I just really liked the, uh, the, 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 the headline here. Destructoid says, Asper is compiling Core Design's Death March in Tomb Raider 4 through 6 Remastered. <laughs> <laughs> that's a this good that's news, a fucking baller headline this news dropped like uh, i don't know an hour before an hour a couple hours before we recorded last week and i didn't include it um but because of that headline it kind of made me chuckle because yeah, i don't remember these games being particularly well loved and having read through this article it's um uh obviously like they weren't four five and six they were rat last revelation Mm -hmm. Uh, Chronicles, and the one that people didn't like, Angel of Darkness. What I didn't realize, there was a point where core design wasn't really feeling the whole Tomb Raider thing anymore, so they were going to kill her off. 
And I yeah. was just like, yeah. the fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> we say thee nay. So, yeah, it is, um, I don't know. Apparently the, uh, what is it? The, the Re- La- Last Revelation Chronicles are pretty solid games. It's just Angel of Darkness is the one that people don't really like. But I never played through those. Like, I was so done with with fucking Tomb Raider by that point, and then <laughs> it like wasn't... Just like core design. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was not until that reboot where I was like, oh, never mind, this is so fucking good. Just like I that. never got into Tomb Raider to begin with. Um, you know, the original game, I didn't care for much of the, the tank controls didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I just didn't, didn't find it to be very fun. So, uh, I did play the reboot a little bit, that first one of the reboot series, and I thought that was quite good. That's so, so good. That whole that whole trilogy is is really f- <coughs> fuck, really fucking solid. <coughs> Moving on, because I don't have anything else to say about Tomb Raider. Yeah, no, uh, that's- other than I'm I'm happy for Tomb Raider fans. I'm glad that's happening, honestly. That's not true that I didn't have anything else to say. Like Doing the first couple and then leaving the rest of the series on the table. Yeah, that, that would have been fucked up. That that's I hate it when that happens. Yeah. You know? It like it's like when Capcom does these Mega Man Legacy collections and just doesn't do the Game Boy ones and Mega Man and like we're still missing game Mega Man and Base. The Game Boy ones at least showed up on Nintendo Switch Online, but it's not like right. PlayStation and Xbox fans can play those. Uh so now we're and also Mega Man and Base is nowhere to be found. It's part of the story. It's, it's yeah, one it's of the games. It doesn't it's have a number on it, but it's still it's still one of them. What are you doing? What are we doing? What are any of us doing here? Moving on. Go Nintendo reports Anton Blast delayed to December 3rd, 2024 due to hurricane impact. Um, that's kind of a bummer of a headline. Uh, it is. Uh, but it's, if it's it, going to ultimately deliver the better uh, a better product, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, really, if you're you're delayed because of the hurricane, like they said, they're all safe, everyone's safe, but the hur- uh let's see, as for us, we are thankfully all safe, but the hurricanes have directly and indirectly affected a number of our team and their ability to work, with some going weeks without power. So, yeah, okay, you don't need to apologize. Yeah, no, Natural that's okay. Natural disasters Let's- happen. If your game is going to be delayed a little bit, oh no, we'll live. Like, right? seriously. Uh... After playing the demo, which I did enjoy, I'm, like, slightly less into Anton Blast. Just not because I don't think it's good, but because it, it might not be for me. Um, but I'm still pretty stoked to give it a try and see if it is. Yeah. Because uh, I think the game just has a it has such a great energy and look about it. I'm, I'm definitely into that. Uh, but I don't need it immediately. That game can come out when it's good and ready. As all games can. Don't take I don't know, silk song seven, levels of seven time years or to, uh, yeah. I was thinking chicken wiggle, but yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's not do. You know what? Even even do silk song levels, but keep us posted. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Just get like give me a little a crumb, man. Something. Just say. Just be we're like, still I didn't working forget. on it. It's fine. We're, we're you know, scopes have changed. Things have changed. Right. It's, you know, it's it's now about a series of crabs. You know, <laughs> let us know. That's right. Give me a little nugget. Feed these little birdies. They're hungry. Yeah. Uh, moving right along, Nintendo Life reports. Oh, this is this is a big one. Um, Pokemon uh, developer Game said. Freak reportedly hacked. Massive amounts of data allegedly leaked. Um, so, yeah, this is a... Somebody said this in our Discord, and uh, I couldn't agree with it more. Leaked is the wrong word. Stolen, right, is the right word. Yeah, they, they, there was their information was stolen. Leaked Full is stop. like, oh no, something slipped out. We made a mistake, and something came out we don't want to see. This was somebody, a thief, stole this shit from them. It was, yeah. it was that not intended for public consumption. You're not doing anyone a service. You stole this because you think we should be able to see every step of every piece of development that Game Freak does, or because you're an asshole. Hackers suck. But <laughs> it's one of those two things. 
Um, now, I'm not saying that some of the stuff that came out isn't extraordinarily interesting, because sure. some of it is. Um, but also, it's information that I, you know, it's not essential to my, you're not saving anyone's life here. No. Nobody's getting, like, medication they need now that you have uncovered Pokemon leaks. <laughs> Fucking weirdos. Um, it is something I, when... When it got brought up, it was something that I was like, man, maybe this is something we should talk about. And then there was some some conversation on the Discord about whether or not we should talk about it. But then once it came up um, with the stolen, I, I kind of felt the same way like you and, and the same way we kind of treated those Sony leaks. The yeah. quote unquote leaks. We didn't talk about it because it wasn't leaked. It wasn't like, oops, we fucked up. It, it's stolen information. And... Yeah. There was also a little bit of a, the, a conversation on the Discord about not being so negative during week old news. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we would have just gone negative there. So, yeah. so yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to continue to talk about this. I was, it's a newsworthy thing that happened. There are a few tidbits that did come out that I think are interesting to discuss. So sure. we will, but those aren't negative pieces. This right. is the negative piece right here. Stop doing this shit. Yeah, stop right? stealing shit from people. <laughs> Stop oh, cool. stealing shit. Like, I understand the internet. Or they're going to fucking lock it up thing. and make you wait 40 minutes for your fucking Pepsi. Exactly. And we don't need that. We really no. don't. It's it's like the people, like, trying to hack and leak all the uh, trailers before a Nintendo Direct or an E3 presentation. Like, fuck you. If these people worked so hard to so make the, hard. the reveal of their products, like, this is the thing that they've been working on, and this is how they want to reveal it to the public. And you're like, nah, fuck you. Like, now a leak, a leak is like when, remember when uh, Simon Belmont got r announced for Castle, for uh, for Smash Brothers? Because Nintendo, like, updated the fucking Smash Brothers website yeah. with all of his information. They're like, oh shit. Whoops. That is a leak. Somebody that's made different. a mistake. That's, that's a leak. That information leaked. And that is kind of funny. It's a little bit of a bummer that it, it still had a pretty great presentation, right? Sure. The trailer was still great, but that's a bummer. When people's work gets ruined like that, but that's somebody made a mistake. This is fucking theft. You're a fucking criminal. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Shuffling on to the next thing, Nintendo Life reports from said leak, Switch 2's code name believed to be in latest Pokemon data leak. What was it? Apparently it is being internally referred to as Ounce. Okay. That I, now, I find clearly, internal code names to be the just the weirdest fucking things. Right? They're, they're, they're so super weird. And sometimes Always. sometimes they mean something, sometimes they don't, right? Like Project Cafe or Project Dolphin. Uh it's all interesting stuff. So but so but what does it mean, right? Project Cafe, I think, was Wii U. And that the whole concept of Wii U is that social me me verse and Wara Wara Plaza like right. that was the whole revolution was was for Wii uh, the the Project Reality for Nintendo sixty four like they usually mean something Project usually. Dolphin whatever Project Dolphins use the flipper chip hooray uh, usually <sighs> they mean something like it has something to do with its it, its general persona so. Ounce. How interesting. Yeah, what does that mean? What does that mean? Ounce. Does it mean it's small? Does it ounce mean, to the ounce? Does it does it mean that it only weighs an ounce? That the games I, come in ounces? <laughs> does it mean you're gonna get really fucking high? It's all about <laughs> weed. Oh, is that what it is? It's the Nintendo Weed? Oh, w I I D? Oh no. Oh no. It's legal, Chris. Legal in New Jersey, anyway. Uh, we can smoke an ounce to this. Oh, apparently, Jeez, up, hose uh, down uh, while you motherfuckers bounce to this. Another code name of Muji was also uncovered in software development kits in 2024. Hmm. Okay. Nintendo hasn't revealed the official name of Switch successor just yet, but it's promised the new hardware will be announced this fiscal year. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's very interesting. What does it mean? What does it mean? And why are they hiding it? Like, they don't always hide their code yeah. names. Like, kind of seems like it, a... It's going to be the fucking Switch 2. That's what it's going it to be called. It fucking better, better be. be. <laughs> don't... 
don't fucking confuse the the customers again at the switch holidays. Three th- switch switch three sixty. But, yeah. <laughs> the switch, switch you. Like, don't fucking do it. Don't do it. Switchy. Switchy. <laughs> the Nintendo bitch. <laughs> the Nintendo swatch. Just, just switch to. Just please, Nintendo, for once, be fucking normal. Be weird about everything else. <laughs> Literally everything else. Continue to be your weird, fucking, wonderful, wacky self. But in this one moment, if you could just... I just want the mail. Uh, the tacos are great. They're but I, maybe the best tacos I've ever had. But I just want the mail. Alright, this next story comes to us via time extension. This is nothing new for us. I just wanted to shout it out because it's always cool to me when people we know get their work uh, talked about on major news sites. Time extension reports Kid Icarus's unofficial SNES port is about to get even better. Now we're talking about adding the backgrounds to the uh, NES Classic Edition. Uh, yes. Just from that into the, the uh, Rumbleman's uh, Super NES port of Kid Icarus. And I just love that it's, that know, it's getting talked about. Getting, yeah, That's it's so great. About. It yeah. is, because it's a great project. He's doing he's doing amazing work. Those backgrounds look so cool. They really I, do look really, really good. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Ah, okay, sorry. I got a text from my mom, and when my mom texts me at 1017 at night, I'm like, uh-oh. It's dad it's usually dead. not great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I was just going to go with it's usually bad news, but yeah, yeah. that's... Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. just, John left his jacket with her. Oh. It's also fine. He has bad another news. one. <laughs> it's fine. We'll buy him another one. We he has a podcasting. One. Anyway, moving right along. Uh, Pure Xbox reports Rare Boss to become new head of Xbox Game Studios. I assume they don't mean he is an uncommon boss, but he is the <laughs> boss of Rare. <laughs> Rare Boss Craig Duncan is set to become the new leader over Xbox Game Studios, with current XGS head Alan Hartman set to retire, per GamesIndustry.biz. I, uh... I don't, I don't know what? how to feel about this. Because Rare is such a bad fit for Microsoft to begin with to begin they with haven't exactly shipped a ton of games over the last decade well and what they have shipped has not been g- great objectively right like it hasn't been great it hasn't all been sea shit of thieves sea of thieves has been a success for them yeah but that's it the end <laughs> like I, I mean, Battletoads people like, right? Not like liked really. enough. There was the, the that I liked it enough, but that really did not go anywhere. And that was, I really think that had a lot to do with the platform it was on. I think that game would have performed much better really as well a Switch on game. Switch, yeah. I mean, people like Killer Instinct performed decently enough. well on, on. Yeah, Killer Instinct was great, but they didn't make Killer Instinct. Oh well, yeah, that's fair. Okay, yeah, like that. Yeah, that it, was, it seems. Um, it seems a weird fit. I hope it works out great. I really, KI really was do. 2013. Like, that was Jesus more than 10 years Christ, ago. was it? See, like, Rare Replay was 2015. 2018 was Sea of Thieves. 2020 was Battletoads. And then they announced Everwild. That's it. That's huh. it. So, the head of this team is now the head of Xbox Game Studios. That seems like a yeah. strange fit to me. Now, granted... I'm not a multi-million dollar CEO, right? I don't, no, what I the don't fuck do run we know? a multi-billion dollar corporation. Exactly. What the fuck do I know? This guy could be great. You know, picture, his picture on this in this article is not the most flattering in the world. He's Aww. making kind of a weird face. I don't know why they picked that one, but whatever. Um, why are you doing like that, that with your face? It's just what my face looks like. There is somebody at Xbox whose name is Matt Booty, and <laughs> that will never not make me smile. Yeah. So booty, 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 booty everywhere. You know how I feel about booty, Chris. That's I do. Your I'm anaconda that don't want none. <sighs> none, <laughs> unless it's got buns on. That's right. It's still six two, as I'm sure you know. I, I'm I'm aware. Just yes. updating our listeners who are listening <laughs> to this a week later. <laughs> By I'm the way, sure they want to know. <laughs> I've been so good, Chris, about not mentioning the fact that I have the Yankee game streaming in the background silently. 
I can. You're I've just. Had, I've I had know, but I'm better than streaming. you. <laughs> just, I've had games streaming while doing this podcast plenty of times. I know. It's usually porn, but right now it's fucking <laughs> baseball, which is also kind of porn. It's all sticks and balls. I'm just <laughs> push square <laughs> reports. Never mind. <laughs> Episode title. There you go. It's all sticks and balls. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> it's a it's DRPG. Like... That was also pretty fucking funny. You're on fire tonight, Chris. <laughs> I am. I am struggling, but you are. You are certainly p- picking up the fucking slack. Push Square reports Dino Crisis fans hoodwinked as Capcom bamboozled. (laughs) Capcom's PS1 classic requires premium and lacks trophies. Come on! What do you have against Dino Crisis fans? (laughs) (laughs) Of all games, it's not that good, right? No, it's really not. It's okay. It's it's a cool game about shooting dinosaurs. It is a solid game. It's a classic for a reason. People like it for a reason. It's not like the all-time masterpiece. Why are you being such dicks about this game, Capcom? You really are being dicks about it. Dino Crisis, of all things. Like, there's a bunch of people that just want their fucking Dino Crisis. They're like, fine. We'll put it on there. But only if you have premium, and we're not adding any trophies. (laughs) You You fucks. Joe Muncher on Twitter uh, posted, Capcom really pulled the rug out from new and old Dino Crisis fans, locking the game to the PS Plus premium sub. So much hype for today that has been absolutely deflated across the board. This barely counts as easy accessibility when I recommend the game to others. And then he posted a picture of an anime girl with the subtitles, This shit is so ass. (laughs) Agreed, anime girl. It's just a weird choice. It's weird. It is. Why this game? Why are you doing... <laughs> why Sorry, is Dino Deck, Crisis... Shush. Why is Dino Crisis the hardest thing? Like, just release a, a Dino Crisis trilogy. Like... That's it. That's all anybody uh, wants. Put it on every platform. One, two, and three. When Dino Crisis... Have these ever... No. Where Have they ever been ported anywhere? No. I'm, I'm okay. 100% sure that no, they have not. Dino Crisis. And by, by 100% see. sure, I mean, I have no idea. I am just saying it with conviction um, because it sounds right. So Dino Crisis um, originally came out on PlayStation. It was ported to Dreamcast? I don't remember that. I mean, I do now. I just completely and totally forgot that Dino Crisis was ported to Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about, like, after... Yeah. All right, watch. I get it. My heart rate is elevated. It's always fucking elevated at this time of the week. We're Sorry. talking about Dino Crisis. Of course I know. it's elevated. <laughs> I keep getting these notifications. Like, I stopped wearing my watch because it's like, your heart ro- rate rose above 120 while you were just sitting. I was like, yeah, no, I'm fucking aware. I, t- I get it. Okay. It was re-released on PSN in 2006. Was it? Apparently, okay. well, it was, the there was devel- they were developing a Game Boy Color version. But anyway, that's just the first Dino Crisis. The first Dino Crisis got a re-release in 2006. Now, what of Dino Crisis 2? Dino Crisis 2 was not on Dreamcast. That was on PlayStation and Windows. And, um... Hmm. The game was ported to Windows in 2002, while a PS2 version was announced, but never released. Interesting. So Dino Crisis 2 has not seen a re-release anywhere, as far as I can tell. I'm also, I want to say, really, really, relatively confident (laughs) Dino Crisis 3 has never made it anywhere. Did people like Dino Crisis 3? That was the Xbox exclusive I think that one people do not care for. That was in space. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Jews uh, in space. Oh, this was originally planned for PS2 and Xbox, but the PS2 version got scrapped. Interesting. Hmm. In the year 2548, it's been 300 years since Earth lost contact. Oh my god. Stop it. <laughs> Next story. Next story. Move on. 
No, no, I refuse. Uh, where, where was? Uh, uh, let's see. There's no talk of this getting ported anywhere. Uh, game trailers included the game in the top ten worst sequels feature, stating it's a good sign you have an abysmal sequel when its developer respectfully declines to follow it up. Um, it got pretty mediocre. It's a 51 out of 100 on Metacritic, so it's we're talking some some stunning mediocrity. But you know what? I say fuck it. You make the trilogy. Don't leave do it. Don't leave it hanging. Release. I mean, all no. Three if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, do it. Right. So let's see. This takes place in 25. I'm fascinated by this. I always knew it was in space. I didn't realize it was that far into the future. So when does Dino Crisis Two take place? Dino Crisis Two plot on May 10th, 2010. Okay. <laughs> That's so, quite the time jump. <laughs> quite the time jump. Holy crap! Why did they do that? Yes, twenty five forty eight. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, that's weird. Capcom. Weird choice. Still included in the trilogy. I say do it. Let people play Dino Crisis. It's all they want. It's what the people want, Dan. It's weird. It's what the people want to see. Uh, all right, there it is. Oh, next one. Here's another one from the leak that I found utterly fascinating. Um, so let's see. A uh, time extension reports unreleased Yoshi's Egg remake for Nintendo DS breaks cover online. So the original, so the ga the puzzle game Yoshi for NES, also known as Yoshi Eggs, other place in the world, I think. Um, let's see, North America was just Yoshi. Europe was known as Mario and Yoshi. Either way, that game was by Game Freak, mm -hmm. uh, and you can tell by its music, which is very similar to Pokemon, like, original recipe Game Boy Pokemon music. But anyway, it's a pretty solid puzzle game, but selling it as its own thing would be just weirdly impossible. Like, that that's, right. it's just not, there's not enough content there to make it It's a not a game full game, it's a neat it's, little... Yeah. It was a neat NES game back when you could app. sell, like, Dr. Mario as a full-priced release. Yeah. But, you know, this ain't it anymore. So, apparently, they were developing a remake of it for the Nintendo DS. Uh, and it looks really weird. Like, it looks super cool. It's got, like, new monster designs and some fun animations. Uh, the music ain't great. Um, but there's, like, 23 minutes of gameplay of it online uh, from, from this leak. That apparently, at one point, they were going to try and do this thing. And honestly, I, I'm, 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 it makes sense why this didn't actually come out. Uh, although, maybe as like a download title, this still would have been cool. Yeah. It's so weird. This is such a cool thing. I love it when this kind of stuff gets gets found. I don't like how this got found, but I like it when we find out like th you know, unreleased games uh, get discovered. I, I always find that rather fascinating. And this game, of all games, like, this is such a weird puzzle game. It is. Have you, it, have you ever played odd. Yoshi before? No. So, like, it's a falling block puzzle game. Two things fall at a time. And they're all monsters. Except uh, they're either monsters or they're parts of a Yoshi egg. And you play okay. as uh, Mario underneath these four platforms. And you can flip them around. So, you know, just, just change positions one to the other. Uh, on these four different platforms, and everything that's stacked up on it comes with it. Now, if you get two monsters in a row, those monsters disappear, but you don't get any points for that. What you get mm. points for is if you get a bottom Yoshi egg, then you stack up a bunch of different monsters inside of it, and then you put a Yoshi egg top on top of it, all those monsters then disappear into the egg, and you get a big, like... It's one of the, it's really really rewarding huh. like seeing the the egg like do 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 eat all the things and then a Yoshi pops out and goes Yoshi and it's pretty yeah. great. Well, he didn't go Yoshi on the NES. He made that weird little <laughs> sound that the Yoshi used to make. Yeah. Um, it's a neat game, and I definitely put a decent chunk of time into it back in the day. I would have I would absolutely buy a modern reimagining of it. It just made me super happy to know that someone somewhere was actually thinking enough about that game to say, you know what, we should do. We should make a modern reimagining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, excuse me. No, uh, sorry. So yeah, that's fucking wonderful. I, I hate that it was stolen, but also I just love that that's neat. Yeah. 
But moving on to some bad news, we'll just mention this real quick because it is in the news. Uh, Nintendo Life reports League of Legends developer Riot Games confirms another wave of layoffs, axing another 530 jobs across the company because uh, this game industry is broken. Yeah, it, we kind of we kind of stopped doing that for a little bit, and it was like, all right, maybe we're going to get through the rest of the year without, you know, without fucking doing it. Nope. It's a bummer, man. It's a bummer. We laid off everyone we could. Oh, never mind. We found some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks, man. Hopefully all those people... Uh, 530, they just... The numbers are what staggers me more. You know what I mean? Like... League of Legends is laying off 530 people in addition to all the people that they've already laid off. Like, is there anybody left? Are there like two dudes and a fucking like, and an and AI is doing the rest of it? Maybe like it, j- that just seems like a lot of people. It seems like too many. But that also kind of speaks to what we were talking about. Yet you know, what we've kind of been the running theme of of the podcast for this year has just been, why are there so many people to make this video game? Yeah. It it seemed like, but, I mean, but again, we also don't know what the fuck we're talking about, you know? I think I know what I'm talking about. I uh, have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Moving right along, RetroRGB posts pre-orders for the Analog 3D open on October 21st. Now, after this episode has gone live, uh, those pre-orders will already be sold out and have been put up on eBay for obscene amounts of money because that's the way this all works. But it's the Analog 3D. It is a 4K... um, N64. Uh, Yeah, according to the article... um, after being teased exactly one year ago, Analog has announced a pre-order date and more information about their latest product, an FPGA-based Nintendo 64 clone console known as the Analog 3D. If you've got $250 US burning a hole in your pocket and the time to test your luck on October 21st, 8 a.m. PDT, then you too can enjoy GoldenEye 007 in glorious 4K. Just be sure to budget extra, extra for a controller and Analog's ample shipping costs, and be prepared for that Q1 2025 <laughs> shipping date to get nudged around a little. Uh, what the fuck does N64 look like in 4K? Still muddy. It's got, like, I... I This is the first analog product that I have been somewhat concerned about because there are no screenshots of what that looks like. Right. That's the well, only I mean, thing I that gives me pause. I imagine it's going to look similar to, like, what we're seeing on uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Like, it's just cleaner. It's still muddy. It's still N64. It's just not going to look there, terrible. There's, so mu- there's well, only so much you can terrible do. Terrible error. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think this is great, though. Analog makes really cool, really sexy products. They do. I love the controller. That was, that was what really struck me, yeah. and I'm so glad that they're selling that separately. 8-Bit Do made this... Really neat new controller for it. Um, it's definitely the nicest looking N64 controller I've ever seen. Uh, as much as I like the Retro Fighters one, I think this is a much sleeker design. Yeah. Um, I'm really into it. it it's, it's, that's very, yeah, it's very good, cool. It, everything they do looks great. Yeah, that is true. It, if, if, if you can say anything about this company, Analog, they make some nice looking products. Yeah. They really, really do. If I liked N64 more, I'd be way more interested, but I don't... I'm, there's just not that many N64 games I'm all that interested in playing that I can't play on my N- Nintendo Switch Online. They really just they just need to put the new Tetris on there, and I'm happy as a clam. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe there'll be a podcast episode about that in the future. Hey! No. Next up... <laughs> next up... It's a DRPG. This is, <laughs> this is fascinating so to me. It's probably not fascinating, but... I think it's fascinating. Uh, Kotaku reports Concord is receiving mysterious Steam updates, even though no one can play it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to come back. They are going to... It's not just gone. Like, no company... Uh, I I would be shocked. Let me preface that by saying, again, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I would be shocked if the game was out for a week and they were like, well, that didn't work. 
let's just never speak of it again. Like, that doesn't fucking happen. I, I, they're I don't know, clearly I don't know going what they're to do, gonna do with something. It. I really don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, yeah, but, I mean, but the fact that this is getting free to started, play, so something multiplayer hero shooter Concord is possibly the biggest entertainment failure ever. Not just gaming, but all of entertainment across all of time. A four hundred million dollar project that reportedly sold fewer than twenty five thousand copies and never saw more than seven hundred people playing at once on Steam pulled from sale and deleted from PS5's two weeks after its disastrous launch. So it's kind of weird that it's still receiving updates. Um, doop, 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 doop. Let's tell you, someone somewhere is still playing Concord. Uh, yet someone somewhere is still tweaking at its code. In fact, some people are still playing it. Admittedly, only two of them in the last 24 hours, but five people were playing at once on October 5th. They, logic dictates, can only be people from within Firewalk Studios, the in-house yeah. Sony development team who made the game. Does this confirm Sony's vague illusion toward one day reviving the game? It's not impossible, obviously, and you can bet your teeth there are people at Sony in very expensive suits <laughs> asking other people in very expensive suits how they can possibly <laughs> claw back some of the better part of the half a billion dollars. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, just no way you spend that much money and go, Bob, two weeks, that's all we're giving it. Like... That anybody who thought that was just going away is it, it, that's just silly it certainly is I don't know what they do with it I don't know how they fix this like I just don't know how you fix this they make because... a chicken wiggle yeah, they go back there you go they do to take it the take it the complete opposite direction yeah because like as of it's right now it's a pixelated now, hero shooter it's it's not even just the fact that it's that it's a genre that's already pretty well full it's just that it is a deeply unappealing game. I mean, apparently, just looking at it, it is a, it is an uh, the the character designs are all incredibly unattractive. There's the the story and its entire personality is what people in suits think Guardians of the Galaxy was. Yeah, like it is it is so. There is not a lot of redeeming quality in at least on the surface level for Concord. Now, there, is there, something there definitely in that did not somewhere? appear to be. Yeah. There could be something in there, but I mean, I've never played it and I have no intention to. Yeah. It, it Man, it's just a weird thing. It's a weird thing to see a miss that big. It I mean, is. but like, that's not the only game that that's happened to recently. I mean, look at, look at what happened to fucking, um... Oh, what Cyberpunk 2077? Right, right. I mean, that game came out and it was just a fucking a shit show. Right, but people were interested in that from the get-go because it was at least an interesting concept. There was like Oh, sure. The game itself was like, "No, I want that game. It's a shame that it sucks." Whereas Concord was like they la they launched that trailer and everyone was like, "I don't want this at yeah. all." <laughs> Yeah. But who knows? It's possible that they could, I mean, they it, could make some kind of quick turn, cool turnaround on it. It definitely is. It definitely is. It's uh, since you've since you've given up the uh, the ghost here, Chris. Um, it is now six five Yankees because for some reason, after giving up the game winning home run last night to David Fry, Aaron Boone was like, "You know what? I'm going to put Clay Holmes, our closer from earlier in the year." who blew a fucking major league record 13 saves this year, so we removed him as the closer. I'm going to put him back in the fucking game tonight. And it was 6-1 when he came into the game, and it's 6-5 now. Oof. Big oof. The fuck are we that's doing? En that's enraging. <laughs> I, I just... I like Aaron Boone so much as a human. He seems like just a great guy... And the walk-off home run against the fucking Red Sox back in the day. The Aaron Boone! When he, like, who the fuck is Aaron Boone to be hitting a monster home run? Like, I was fucking great. And he's still in there. Holy shit. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to keep all of this on the inside, but you brought it out. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's what we're here for. We're here it's to listen fine. to you talk about baseball. It's not. That is not what we are here for. Hunto P. Very different podcast. Anyway, 
Uh, on the complete opposite side of the spectrum of uh, Concord, Go Nintendo reports Pokemon trading card game Pocket hits 6 million pre-registrations. <laughs> Surprise, the Pokemon mobile card game is going to be a big success. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Who knew? Yeah, I, I couldn't have seen, I could not have possibly foreseen that. No. I was like, good, man. Good for you. That seems like a weird choice to put out a Pokemon mobile game. But what do yet, maybe they knew something. <laughs> maybe they knew. Maybe they're smarter than me. Uh, Retro RGB uh, reports Victor Lukitz unveils Doom CD 32X Fusion. <laughs> Saw a that. new era for the Doom 32X Resurrection Project. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that needs to happen, but like, go off. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They're making a, th a CD 32X. Like the combination of Sega CD and 32X that needed to, was required to play what like five games. They're making a Doom for that. That is really impressive looking and incorporates you know aspects of Final Doom. Like it's super impressive, but it also still looks like Doom running on a 32X. So it still doesn't look as good as like the modern versions yeah. of Doom that you can get on your. PlayStation or Xbox or Switch or whatever. But just from a sheer insanity standpoint, I love this story. I absolutely love that this is a thing that somebody is putting the time into making and uh, Yeah, it's I, pretty I, nuts. I'm here for it. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. Well, Dan, that leaves us with our last story and clearly the most important and controversial of them all. Okay. What's the name of this site? There it is. Uh, Makeship <laughs> is selling a data oh. plush. Yeah. What did you think bucks. I was going to talk about? What could be I more important than this? I didn't Dan? know. I, this is the earth shattering news. It's thirty U.S. dollar dues. Uh, that's that's what Makeship costs. It is. It's so small. Mm hmm. Yeah, I know. As There's a, like four or five of them up in each of my kids' rooms right now. They've only sold 18 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, is yeah. just like, if like I, I guess if this doesn't reach its goal, they don't get made. Exactly. Is that how this works? Yep. It's only 9% funded. And honestly, like it's, it's a hard sell. And I think it's because of the face. I mean, so if it's 9% funded at 18, you would assume they need to sell 100 to get... 100%? Sounds, sounds about right. Or no. <clears throat> 200. If they sell... Yeah, 200. Sorry. Yeah. It, yeah. I, <sighs> I'm looking at this thing like, this it's is adorable. a Daddish plush. I should need to have this. But this is what Daddish looks like on the cover art. It's not what he looks like in the game. In the game, he's got that I am way too tired for this shit look on his face all yeah. the time. He's not all happy. That, no, because he's chasing his kids around who have run away for ridiculous reasons. Huh. And living in a world that's completely insane. I should it, have I should have pressed buy instantly on this. But the but price tag combined with the face was like, huh. yeah, you know what? I just I just this isn't this this isn't the dadish that I love. It is, but it isn't. So I'm really on the fence. Do I spend the money on it? I mean, if I if I'm being honest in my assessment of this, uh, I don't really see this getting funded um, because there's plenty of stuff that does not get funded on Makeship, like stuff that you know it just doesn't for whatever reason. Are there enough Daddish fans in the world that know that this exists? that are also willing to drop 30 bucks on a pretty small plush. Yeah, that and that therein lies the problem. Again, if he had just the line for a mouth instead of the happy the, the happy right. smile, I would not have thought twice, twice. I would absolutely pay $30 for a tiny plush of that ridiculous face. But the happy face is what's throwing me off. I wonder if it could be changed. I wonder if it would have any effect. What do you mean? Like, if they like change the... I wonder if there are more people who are like me. Mm. If he had the, the blank dead-eyed stare... I don't instead know. ...instead of the happy face. 
if more people would be like, oh yeah, I need to have that. I don't know. It's, don't... it's interesting because, like, if you look to, if you're on the Makeship website and you look at their other projects that are currently like in the pre-sell phase, like the same phase that Dadish is in right now, they have a boyfriend and girlfriend plush uh, from Friday Night Funkin', and those are funded at like two thousand percent. Oh my god, they do, or something like that. Oh my yeah. god, I just clicked the search bar and there he is. Yeah. Holy shit. <clears throat> and how much is this one? Is the sauce 30, 30 bucks. bucks? Yeah. No, it's oh, it's for both of them is 60 bucks. 30 yeah. bucks. Oh my god. Oh my god. But but if you look at the funding or the percentage on that, it's like a th over a 1000%, right? I'm not making that up. Uh 3120%. <laughs> yeah. Again, so it's like 30 bucks, but like John is And how many sold is that? You know. 6240. They, like, John is obsessed with this game. I might need to get this for him for Christmas. He doesn't know this exists. But when I'll look at when it's going to ship. January 2025. Good point. Okay. Yeah, so you'd have to like give him a picture of the plush. Like, And we've done that for the kids before, too. They were like, we want this. I forget what we got a year or two ago. I think it was before there was official uh, fucking Pizza Tower merch, maybe? I don't remember. Mm. Um... But that that's kind of like the um the double edged sword, right? Is that we all scream about wanting more indie games and more double A games and these sorts of things, but when these projects that we come to love uh, get merch, it's expensive. Cause they're smaller studios. You know? Right. I can I can walk into any store right now and buy a Pokemon plush for ten bucks. You know? Tons of different characters, whatever, that just lousy with them because they're massively successful big company, you know, things. But here we're and talking you make about more this. of them. You know, yeah. this is something we're only gonna make two hundred of these ever. Yeah. Like and that's it. Small like, production runs cost yeah. more money. Yeah. So, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Again, if the face was different, I would not hesitate. I would absolutely spend the money. But the face isn't different. It's not right. what I think of when I think of Dadish. Hmm. It just kind of makes me sad because, like, I know there's there I know there's people like me who have wanted a uh, a Dadish merchandise. A little Dadish, yeah, yeah. But like, I'm just looking at him like. That you look at it, look you're like, like yeah. that's ten bucks. Like I would pay ten bucks for that. I'd pay twenty for it. Yeah, I even would. twenty. Yeah. Thirty is it's a I know. It's a lot. It's a rich Makeship has gotten game. my money. They've got my so money. So what is this? Pricks. So it looks like they're listed in order of like popularity. Boyfriend is the second one. The first one is Z thirteen Sebastian Solace. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's probably some web series shit. 13,000% <clears throat> funded. <laughs> Introducing the Sebastian Stalis Solace plushie, everyone's favorite little failed science experiment. What is this from? Not officially endorsed by the real Sebastian? Amazing pressure content. What is pressure? There, is, there are so many corners of the internet that I am just not familiar with. It's I mean, so, there's a, oh, oh, geez, it's a, it's a, it's a Roblox game. Oh yeah, nope, there's nope, a lot of that on there. Nope. Yeah. Burn it to the ground. <laughs> oh goodness. So anyway, yeah. anyway, <laughs> that wraps things up for week old news, and that's gonna wrap it up for us this evening. Um. I mean, I know Dan's not going to bed. He's going to be watching the rest of this baseball game. Uh, yes. Which hopefully does not get tied up and go into extra innings. I'm oh hoping Bonus yeah, Cantos. he's going to hang on, hang, on to the, uh, hang on to their one run lead. Yeah. You no, know I, I hope they score a couple more runs so that I don't have to be so fucking worried. They <sighs> don't ask how. They ask how many. As long as that's they win, right. they win. That's all I want. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for us. It's a sorry, it's a slightly shorter show than usual, but extenuating circumstances and all that. Uh, and that will be our show. Join us next time 
for oh i changed that because i was not going to do that what was like what was i thinking for next time hold on hold on right next time we're going to do the 10 20 30 40 that's what time it is i scheduled yeah. out our podcast for like the rest of the the year yeah. and some of january um so yeah next time we're going to do uh, the 10 20 30 40 because it's about that time of year mm-hmm. it's about that time of the month uh, we're going to talk about notable game releases from decades past, as we are or want to do once a month. We are on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's episodes, as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekaid Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. And we'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That is it. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. <laughs>